Hello and welcome to the channel. So in this video, we're going to take a quick look at the CAM workbench. And again, this is a shorter video intended for you to use when you want to use CAM. You can go take a quick look at this video and it will show you how to get there. So I'm, we're going to create this part and we're going to uh, do the CAM for this part. So let's get started okay before we start just let you know i am in the latest released version which at this time is version 1.0.0 now what i've done is i've created a model of this part so you can see it's basically a square it has one hole in it here it has a recess around this edge and it has a pocket in it here um, that has some radii on it. So that's what we're going to machine. And I'm going to show you how we create the cam for that. Now, first thing we need to do is we're going to go into the cam workbench. So if you haven't done so already, go into the cam workbench. And then on in the cam workbench, you're going to see this icon. This icon starts a new job. When we start a new job, it's going to ask us what we want to import into that job. I'm going to import that part that I have there and so we can just open that so you can see so i'm importing the part and i also have a template already set up that has my cutter in it so i typically use a quarter inch cutter so i just have it set up with a quarter inch cutter so i don't have to do anything else to import my cutters but i'll show you how we do that as we go so now i've imported it and i'm going to just open up this side here so we can see this box a little bit better so the initial setup if you look here, it says create a box for your stock. And the box is default into 20 by 120 by 20. So that's this shape you can see here, which is of no use to man or beast. That's not going to help any of us. Why? I'm not sure why we'd have a 20 by 120 by 20 box to start as stock if we're creating this part. It just doesn't make any sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, use my existing model so i can say use existing solid or i can say extend models bounding box so i can do that and then what i have now is a box that makes more sense that goes around my model and it has by default has a one millimeter addition to every side so i've got the box is one millimeter bigger in every direction than I need it. Well, I don't like that. I'd much rather have the box, my stock, be the size, the blank of the shape. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all those ones out and make them all zeros. So now if you look, I have a box which is actually the size of the stock. That's a great thing. Now, when I do my machining, I always machine from this corner. So I have a template on my CNC router uh, that sits on the router. Then I can just push that into the corner and it gives me this point here. So what I want to do is I want to set my origin to be that point. So I'm going to go in here. This is that bounding box. So I'm going to go right to that one until I pick that point. I'm going to click it. And I'm just going to say set origin. So now what's happened is my origin has moved and it is now on the corner at the top. So everything I'm cutting is going to be negative values. And I'm going to go from this corner. So I'm going to index off that corner. So I like that. Everything looks good there. And I don't need to move anything else. Uh, I'm going to look at my output. I have my output, my post processor. I use this one called MPCNC2. It's one that I developed. I took one of the Marlin ones because my board is a Marlin board and I modified it so it works with the MPCNC. So that's my post processor. You use the one that works with your system. So if, you, if you've got a proprietary system, they probably provided you with a post processor. So everything's good there. And... Then from the tool standpoint, if you don't have a tool already in here, you're going to need to add a tool. So you, you will need to add a tool from your library. 
if there are no tools in your library, you're going to have to add some tools to your library as well. So those are all parts I'm not going to cover here because I'm just trying to get you up and running and we can go down a rat hole with all of that. So I'm pretty happy with where I am now. I'm going to say OK. And that's my job set up. So now what I need to do is to set up some operations. And the first one I'm going to set up is this operation in here. I'm going to just click on the bottom of that. So I've got that shape. And then I'm going to say we're going to make a pocket shape. And I'm just selecting that pocket shape. And once again, it's going to default to some of the things here. So it's going to do climb milling. I, I like to do climb milling. It gives you a little bit better finish. Um, it's up to you if you want to go conventional or climb. I usually use climb. You can see my quarter inch end mill controller is selected by default because that's the only tool I have in there. Now this zigzag thing is going to leave some stock. It's not going to finish up. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the offset. That's the one I like. And then your step over percent, that's how far the tool is going to go based on its width. So if my tool is six millimeters, hundred percent is going to move it six millimeters in when it cuts. Well, you're going to end up with some lines and things that are not looking so happy. I usually change that to 80% somewhere around there. Looks good. Now we need to look at our extensions. We don't need any extensions for this. We're going to look at our start depth, which is zero, which is that top face minus five, which is the bottom of this pocket. I know that's five millimeters. The step down is 3.15. That's my default step down. So it's based on half the amount of the half the diameter of the tool. So if that and that work, that's great. I can add a finish step down of one millimeter. Now it'll do a 3.5, then it'll do a, a 3.15, then it'll do a 2.15, and then it'll do a one millimeter finish. Then finally, we got these heights. My safe height is coming up to zero and my clearance height is two millimeters. Now I'm going to change that. I want to make my safe height two millimeters. So if you ever change any of these, you just type in two millimeters, say OK. And then I'm going to make my clearance height five millimeters. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger than it, it defaulted to there. So that's good. And then I'm going to say apply. And now you can see my toolpath. And then I'm going to say OK. And now to check that that toolpath looks good, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the cam simulator. I personally prefer the old one. The new one works, but I think the old one looks better personally, <laughs> um, much to the chagrin of the developers, I'm sure. But when you go in here, you can play and it will show you what it's going to do. So it's going to cut that. It's going to make those parts bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it's going to eventually go down to the full depth. And you can see it's coming all the way out to the side. And then there's that finished depth, the final one millimeter. And that helps because you haven't got a load on the bottom of the tool. It's going to help to clean up the sides as well. So there you go. That would be that pocket done. Now with this simulator, if you say OK, it's going to save the simulation on my model tree. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to say cancel. No need to do that. Now, I want to do this outside edge here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this face and I'm going to select this profile tool. So I select that and then I'm going to say my cut is on the outside. It's using that same tool and it's cutting counterclockwise and I don't need any extra offset. I'm just going to let it do it at the actual width. And then my depths, I just got to check that my start depth should be zero. So we want to do that. So what it's doing is it's, it's selecting zero as my final depth and my start depth as 315. Okay, so we're simply going to go in and say, no, we don't want it to start there. We want it to start at zero because that's the top face. And we want it to end at minus three, which is where that bottom face is. 
and make sure you always put the units in when you're doing this one. And then my step down doesn't make any sense to be 3.15. I'm only three mil deep. So I'm going to make that one millimeter. We'll let it go around a couple of times. And we're going to check the heights on this one as well. So again, it's on zero and two. So I'm going to make that instead. I'm going to make it two millimeters. And I'm going to make this five millimeters and then make sure that when the tool moves it's up off the surface so that's important for us so i'm going to apply that one say okay you can see the tool path here for that particular cut now to test it i'm going to go back into the old one again this time i'm going to turn off my pocket shape because i don't need to see all that happen again i'm going to zoom out a little bit I'm going to run that and we can see that we're going around and we are cutting to the size that we wanted it to be. So there is the second operation. Cancel that again. And now finally, I want to make this hole. And what I'm going to do with this hole is I'm going to select the bottom of that. And I'm just going to do a helix. So we'll just select that. And the helix, we're going to start from the inside. And we're going to use climb milling again and step over percent is 50%. It's not gonna matter because that's a fairly small hole with this size of a cutter. So the only thing we're gonna check is our depths. So it starts at zero and ends at minus eight. That's exactly right for that hole. And then for my heights here, once again, it's on zero. So I'm gonna make that two millimeters. And I'm gonna make this five millimeters. Say OK, apply, OK, and now I can test that one. And I'm going to turn off the other two. I'll zoom in there so you can see it. Bringing it in, cuts that and out. And now what I'm going to do is I'll cancel that. I will make this a bit smaller. I'll zoom in here. And I'm going to do the whole thing so you can see everything happen. This is the order of cuts. So it's going to go in and it's going to cut that big one first. It goes in the first cut is three millimeters deep. Then it's going to do a two point something. And then it's going to do the final one millimeter cut. When it gets done on the inside, it's going to go do the outside. So do that in three passes as well. And then it's going to cut that hole. So we will have our complete shape. Cancel that again. And the final step is to select your job. And then this icon here does the post-processing. So I press that. You can see my file here. I'm going to say OK, and it will ask me where I want to save it. I'm going to save it in my G code directory it's where i save all my stuff and i'm going to just call 19 save that and then i have it so quick look at the g code the g code looks like this so you can see it's exported it tells me what tool i've used and then there's all the actual g code and that's what you're, you would load into your system. Now, I use Octoprint to send to my MPCNC. I just use a Raspberry Pi uh, running connected to my MPCNC. So I can connect to Octoprint and upload that G code and then do all the machining from there. So that's how mine works. But that's the basic process of getting CAM to work in FreeCAD. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. It's free, of course. doesn't cost you anything. If you want to contribute, you can become uh, a member of our Patreon, or you can become a channel member, or you can just buy us a coffee if that's what you'd like to do. Uh, as far as comments, questions, concerns, anything, feel free to leave them below. I do my best to respond to all of them. I enjoy 
helping people. So if you have any problems, I'll, I'll try and help you to get through them. Uh, as far as next video is concerned, if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them below. And I'll look forward to making the next one.